guys, I have with me here the uh, Vento sedan. Oh, I don't need to mention the word sedan anymore. It's just called Vento. Now, Vento is not a new name under VW. It, it, it used to be a sedan of this size, all right? Uh, but of course, after they had the Polo, and then they call it the Polo sedan, for fear that people are not familiar with the name Vento, but then when they reintroduce the 1.2 TSI into the Polo platform, on the sedan, they call it Vento now. Okay, so this car, 1.2 turbo, and within this segment, it's supposed to be the only one that is turbocharged. Um, but that, that, that is not a big thing nowadays, right? But if you think about it, if you came from a Saga, an Axia, and you know, you've, you, 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 have, you have been promoted, your income is higher now, you're ready to move into what was essentially the B segment, you know, what used to be called the B segment. Why do I say that? I mean, of course, everyone still call them the B segment, but uh, be, be real. Uh, both Honda City and Vios have grown so much that when you park this guy or the Mazda 2 or the Ford Fiesta next to the Vios and City, it's almost like a different class of vehicle now, right? They are so big now. So uh, even in our car of the year, we call... I think we group them in, in, in differently. Some are called, you know, uh, compact sedans. Some are called super minis. Anyway, this is the uh, Polo. Oh, again, I mentioned Polo. Volkswagen Vento. Now, they have tarted it up, so it doesn't look as uh, proletariat as before. There are a lot of little garnishing details. You know, instead of that lousy uh, one-piece headlamp, that you get from the old Polo. Now you have all these little design touches that goes inside. It makes the car look a lot more premium. And of course, the chrome bits that runs across, it makes the car look good. It is a small car, okay? And to make small cars to have enough headroom and all that, you need to sort of bulge up the uh, this part, the window line part, okay? But overall, I think this car is not a bad looker. Um, it is one of those hatches that upon being converted into sedans doesn't look absolutely awful. Um, you just think about the Ford Fiesta sedan. You think about the first generation Honda City. Not the 80s first generation, but the reborn one. Those all have horrible proportions. Uh, even the first generation Mazda 2 sedan as well. Uh, the new one is alright. Anyway, smoke tail lamps at the back. Again, the chrome bars does their business. I think if you are interested in the Vento, you really should buy the red color one because it looks good. This red paint uh, with the smoke tail lamps, with the, uh, with the new headlamp, they all add up and they look really good. And of course the rims, the updated rims as well. So it's a good looking car from the exterior. And uh, it's not a very big car, like I mentioned again, but I think the optimization uh, is rather well done. All these clean lines, these are classic uh, VAG group design, and that's a huge boot, okay? That's what this tells you. These are built uh, with not so much budget in mind. I mean, if they have more budget, they would have added a plastic enclosure. And to cover this, of course, those will only come in C segment and D segment cars. Uh, being B segment doesn't mean it's small. Look at the boot. Most of them are really, really huge because they know you need the car for day-to-day -day usability. Okay, spare wheels are in there, and uh, every other thing is rather uh, simple. You can see from the construction, from the bodywork and immediately the carpeting is on top already so there's not a lot of weight there is a lot of very little soundproofing material they're all here these are soundproofing materials um, it's all right cover this and well no car makers bother that part uh, none of them everybody just leave it like that actually i would but uh, this is this segment i wouldn't complain that okay Huge boot, very, very big boot. Uh, counterweight there, but uh, it's alright. It's alright. Sonnet construction. 
and you have a release over here sort of like an electronic release and then you have a keyhole here okay let's move to the back seats the front seats are adjusted to my driving position so uh, I'm gonna go to that later because uh, the amount of room I have back here, of course, is affected by how I adjusted the seats up front. But I, I, I will go to that later and explain to you because uh, it's that I, I just couldn't find a proper seating position. Um, I'll explain that later. Okay, there are rear aircon vents, which is a rare thing. Oh, this is... This is... I don't know whether to call it genius or what but i've never seen such an elaborate design i mean how would a person even come up with this anyway the rear seats they are rather comfortable i have enough headroom i have enough just about brushing my hair but it's not touching yet and it's all right and uh you were like why is there a hump even though this is not four-wheel drive or whatever I think it has to do with optimization of maximizing the floor and all that they push everything down no matter how your body needs these parts to strengthen it it's like how you fold a piece of paper when you have a ridge in the middle it strengthens the car okay so um, sitting in the middle my feet wouldn't be able to fit in between the base of the rear seats and the starting of the rail you see what i mentioned just now optimization they give you the sensation of a lot of uh leg room is because the seats doesn't occupy even up to here so the wells are here the foot wells are there most seats if they occupy until here then then you have a longer tie support this is uh, a little bit lacking but then it's it's this segment so shouldn't complain it the whole thing is one piece plastic, but it's not the scratchy type. Okay, these are what I always say, high quality hard plastics. So hard plastics are cheaper than soft plastics, but within high plastics, hard plastics themselves, they have higher quality ones and lower quality ones. Okay, I this thing is really 1980s. So you get to open it and uh, say, uh, yeah, you can fold them down and carry a lot of load. Okay. Isofix is standard, there's a teetering point there, so it's alright. Um, the fabrics are very high quality, these are high quality fabric seats, but you can hear my nose because uh, I have sensitive nose, so you can see where the front seats are, it's behind the B pillar, so I am not actually sitting in the manner where it was designed to be, let me explain to you. now. The steering is maximized all to the back, so I can push it back in, and I could have moved my seats up more, so that my left foot is proper on the footrest. So my left foot is proper. Now, even the 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 the, the accelerator is all right. Where it is placed is all right. The problem is the brake pedal. The brake pedal is very high up there is a lot of room behind even after i fully depress the brake pedals there is like almost half a foot behind i i think it's the mounting of the brake pedal if they mount it deeper in you see now i'm fully depressed the, the brakes are fully depressed so um to have my my legs in this position is very tiring because if i rest my feet on the brake pedals my feet is like this is very tiring so i have to move the seats further back just to accommodate the brake pedals and my left foot is almost straight on the footrest which is very dangerous when it comes to a collision because you wouldn't want any of your feet straightened up and then because of the brake pedal i have to sit further back and then look at my reach on the steering wheel so i have to extend the steering wheel all the way to the back as much as possible just all this just to accommodate the brake pedal so i would say this this car is designed for someone who is more petite uh, a, a, a shorter lady would find it very comfortable because she will be able to sit correctly uh, 
and her, her feet will be able to touch the uh, the brake pedals, f do a full depression of the brakes without her leg her legs stretching up. But for the five foot eleven me, I I find it harder because I'm I'm fat as well. So look at my thighs. Both of my thighs would have completely covered the seats, and. Um, I think that's my main complaint. That's the only complaint, in fact, in terms of ergonomics. Everything else is perfect. I like this. I like the uh, the placement of the buttons. I have no idea why this one faces like that. They could have mounted a. They could have. They could have installed the entire thing this way, facing me, so it's easier. Rather, it's more intuitive rather than. You see, if I turn to the left now, if I go. You see, this is down. This is left. Wait, wait, let me see. Oh, it's not, it's not. So, the orientation of the dial doesn't follow the orientation of the letters. You get what I mean? The, the dial moving the side mirrors, okay, I'll use the right, the right one. So I push, according to the orientation of the letters, this is left, but this is up when I adjust it, see? and to come down anyway that's that's my complaint as well overall i accept these type of plastics in this car but the overall layout and all this uh when you compare to the honda city when you compare to cars like the uh Peruda myvi this looks rather dated already okay flat bottom steering you can't get this stuff in this segment and this is a very very nice steering wheel uh, it's also nice because I would say luckily or because if, if, if you will notice that BMW Mercedes-Benz Audi Volkswagen they almost have the same steering wheel across the entire range because the new European laws that requires you to do homologation all over again when you have a new steering wheel design is very very costly so they just stick to one steering wheel maybe they have modular parts you know these parts may be interchangeable but overall they're gonna use the same steering wheel all right this is touchscreen um, you know this is touchscreen and then you have some shortcut buttons over there um, it's, it's an okay system but the thing is this in terms of manufacturing costs this will not cost any more than a more advanced system I think the optimization of uh, things like media and all this should no longer be one of the criteria when it comes to uh, segmentizing their cars you know because if I if I look at your your Vento and you offer a better media player doesn't mean I won't get your golf right I mean if you if you if you put in the exact same media system as the one in your golf or in your Passat it will attract me to buy your Vento against a Honda or a Toyota you know you do not cannibalize sales from your golf it consumers doesn't consumers doesn't work that way consumers doesn't work the way as product planners think product planners will think that oh there's a difference between my cars you know I must differentiate them between the golf and the polo so that the golf owner gets no nobody compares your car from a golf to a Passat or a Vento to a golf People compare cars, Golf to Civic, Passat to Camry. They consider cars like that. So you should be trying to kill your competitors instead of worrying about cannibalizing your own sales. So I think all these type of media player rationalization should not exist in 2018 anymore uh, because everyone is trying their best to put in the best things and if, if you do this kind of rationalization is a uh, yeah anyway okay so it's uh, is this a climate control it is a climate control but there's no dual zone or whatever I mean you don't need dual zone actually actually even in a big car we don't really do dual zone I mean it can be a selling point but I think dual zone is the biggest it is the biggest uh, it's overrated dual zone or quad zone or tri zone is freaking overrated because everybody is in this same one and a half meter by two meter enclosure so really 32 malaysia here and finland there impossible it's impossible 
Uh, the fan speed, maybe. Some people want, you know, larger fan speed. Okay, that's, that's just a rant, okay? Uh, it's it's alright. It's straightforward, easy to use. I love this compartment. It's huge. Um, what else? There is at least an armrest for a car of this segment, but I would prefer a... But one thing I like about VAG Group armrests is that they always do that. You can adjust them. Um, but it, it, it could have been a huge console box, you know. It, that would work as well. So overall, the build is solid. It's a Volkswagen. Okay. Uh, everything is solid. Everything is solidly built. Um, are there any expensive touch points? Nope. There are no pretensions of wanting to, to feel expensive. Uh, they do not have that intention. Um, yeah. The interior is like that. There's a little hook there. This is adjustable. Very good. And the seats are... Uh, it's alright. It's fabric. It's alright. Uh, I I don't really need it to be super hugging. But at least this part, the bolster part, is alright. Because when I sit in, I sort of sink in a little bit. So yeah, the interior is alright. Uh, no pedal shifters. Um, there is a dual clutch. Okay, DSG. And it works well. It works well. It's smooth. And some of these touch points are, you know, part sharing, thank God. Some premium stuffs here. And this one as well. Straight off the GTI, I believe. Anyway, so that's the interior. Let's go for a drive. Anything else you need to know? I'm not sure because it's rather simple. Door bins and uh, there's a little... Is it an ashtray? Seriously, what year is this? But you can use it as a dustbin. So that's good. So you have a dustbin in your car. Okay, you could you could put it here or you can put I'm just guessing huh? Let's see if it fits here. Okay it does. I think it's made for here instead of there. Because it's tighter here. Okay, that's all you get in this car. Uh, this is the uh, Vento 1.2 turbo. Let's go for a drive. Alright guys, I am behind the wheel of the uh, Vento now. 1.2 turbocharged and of course a DSG dual clutch transmission. Uh, I think this car is no longer a car that is unfamiliar with Malaysians because many people bought one, many people happily drove one, many people you know, have their own complaints about this car. But over the, since the past two years, we don't hear any problem with VWs anymore, right? So we would love to believe that they have gotten the issue settled. Now I've covered the car. Now I'm cover. Now I'm covering the drive. Okay. First off, uh, if you go into sports mode, almost one gear lower, and the car is very, very responsive. So I think amongst this segment. This is the only one with a true sports mode because it does really sharpens up the car, delivers the power, and now on paper, it doesn't look super impressive on paper. But I can guarantee you one thing, if you are someone like the Swan, I mean, if you watch uh, Motherfucking Wins video, and uh, they have this guy, the Swan, he's actually a Swan. Anyway, if, Someone driving this car, and I, as let's say I'm in a uh, BMW 328i, and we're going from Uluyam to Gotong, I will not be able to outrun you in this car, even though I'm in a BMW 328i, solely because this car handles very, very well and its turbocharged engine in the sports mode really delivers the punch so if you're someone who has uh, you've driven uh, Sagas or uh, Axias, Vivas or even a MyV and you're thinking that you want to step up the game now you're looking at cars uh, like the Honda City, the Vios, this guy here cars that cost about anywhere from 75,000 to 90 over grand okay, top spec or low spec alright and if you're someone who loves driving, this is your entry ticket into, I would say, the uh, German premium car ownership. It's not.
not premium but it is your entry ticket to there because when you buy a car like a Vento you know or a Polo with a dual clutch transmission and whatever or even a Ford Fiesta one litre turbo I mean this these these cars come with uh Conti Sport Contact 2 or something like that these are rather good tires you know I mean you can put in even higher spec tires and you can join driving groups immediately you can join those uh, groups that loves driving uh, be it they have a Lotus in there or an S2000 or a Miata or whatever you're welcome because it's not it's not that people look at the brand or whatever but it's the car itself the car itself can take it it is a somewhat sporty driving car in fact when Honda introduced VSC into the I forgot it's the Jazz or the City they were the first one who introduced uh, electronic stability control into a B segment car they did a media session in Langkawi for all of us journalists and within the segment it involves a double lane change an immediate double lane change and then you have boxes that you have to evade so Honda put up that to demonstrate how the VSC can help stabilize the car after a sudden maneuver of the steering one time two time which would completely unsettle the car but ESC or VSC or DSC or whatever you call it uh, electronic stability control is going to step in and stabilize the car for you and you know what car they prepared in that in that uh, test they prepared the uh, Vios the Almera and the Polo sedan what was known as the Polo sedan back then you know that one only has a 1.6 MPI engine instead of a 1.2 TSI and all of these competitors doesn't have VSC or doesn't have uh, ESC or ESP whatever you call it different car makers will call it differently all right so of course for other car makers they will say that hey that is very unfair Honda you are taking cars with electronic stability control to compare against cars without electronic stability control so <laughs> why is it that 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 you're you're comparing that way so that's that's that's, that's how they they say it you know and and that someone just waved to me uh, i think it's uh, someone who recognized me or something like that anyway so and you know what turned out all the journalists went there okay they did the test in the Vios of course the of course the car will run out of control because it doesn't have ESP or VSC and I think Honda made their point that ESC or ESP is something very very important um, yada 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 okay and then of course the Almera the Almera just emit, the Almera just destroyed the cupboard boxes and all that one guy was pretty interesting the polo sedan because the polo sedan without ESC or ESP or whatever it not only it is able to do the maneuver that the Honda City was able to it can even do it at a higher speed that the Honda City couldn't so <laughs> this was interesting that means this car the, the balance the chassis the sporty handling everything in this car is so well tuned for driving enjoyment that you see i can throw this into a corner but this guy wouldn't dare to even though his his her car is larger has keyless entry has a has way better specifications than this car but if you're not someone who is aftering space like the Vios here or the city there you prefer driving you like to join driving groups in weekend I mean you know you bring a Vios to a driving group like on 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 on, on Ulu Yam and all that right I mean people, you can join but you yourself feel a little bit out of out of place at times provided it's fully modern you lower the car ultra racing this and that then it's a different story right or a manual one the manual one is fantastic if you drive a manual Vios right? it's fantastic actually they don't drive half bad anyway but back to this point here this is the car where it's your entry ticket into European turbocharged car ownership experience 
because if you've driven your Saga, your Viva, you you are you are on the highway sometimes the the bugger just you know the slowest buggers they always travel in the middle lane. Sometimes you want to overtake that car in the middle lane who is hogging everybody, but the bugger is say for example in a Grand Divina going at 90 and everybody is queuing behind him and you are driving your Myvi or your Axia you wanted to overtake him you by law you cannot overtake from the left that will be called undertaking but if you overtake on the right you, you need a longer time to overtake so you put your signal you veer out and then you full throttle your car and then you wait right the car will just it, it will be doing that or oh, there's a myvi behind me the new myvi that is very loud when you go full acceleration and then comes a car from behind it doesn't need to be a very very fast car it only needs to be say a two liter honda accord coming from behind in the fast lane flashing you asking you to get back in there i'm overtaking you and you know that it is faster even though you're halfway trying to overtake the car it's gonna take you uh, some more time than the car's gonna pass you and then you put it back your signal and then you veer back in and you feel a bit miserable and then it's like what the hell right if you move into this car that part of misery will be gone because this car when you push it it is fast it is a fast car I remember driving the Polo 1.2 TSI I was chasing a Cayenne on the fast lane and we are going about 170 ish and at that kind of speed which i can still push it's up to the balls it's up to the size of your cartoons and the cayenne owner decided to move move away and let me pass this is something you cannot do in a my v or whatever because or a city or a Vios try and travel 170 kmh in a Vios and city and tell me it's stable you're lying it is not stable right but cars like this it is stable now I make no mistake it is not as practical as a Honda City or a Vios no way those cars are bigger better spec better in almost everything except driving and performance so the differences between say a Vento and a Vios is almost like the difference between a BMW 316i and a Toyota Camry top spec their cars are very their prices are rather similar the Camry is larger more spacious more quiet it's more comfortable it's more of everything larger boot everything but the 3 series is nicer to drive the 3 series has less power too you buy a 316i you meet a toyota camry hybrid good luck if you're able to chase that car that car is so fast the camry hybrid it is so fast so yeah that's the differences between this and those and a 3 series and a camry so if you love driving this car is really a good buy i will say it's a good buy because um, there are things that you can do to this car and uh, on a day-to-day -day basis it serves its purpose it can sit five there are isofix there's a large boot thereabouts and i think vw has improved a lot in terms of their after sales um everything is is, is all right so do i have gripes yeah i mean the seating position i mentioned just now the brakes the, the positioning of it for me and the other part is it doesn't have keyless but my Audi doesn't have keyless as well my Audi S4 doesn't have keyless I have to take out my keys and unlock the doors and sit into the car and push the key in to start it same process my BMW 640i doesn't have keyless as well I have to take out the keys unlock it and put it back into my pocket and sit inside the car and press push start which is stupid but I've got used to it so yeah all right so to me this car you have good visibility it is a very good size i can throw a corner way faster than the guy in front of me could uh, for my skill set okay if you are better in driving you say no i can definitely beat a vento that's your that's your uh you hero lah. you you are better than me in driving 
I mean, I've met some vans that can drive faster than I could. Hello, you're on your phone still? Thank you. I like horns like that. You can do a gentle horn. Some are just like, bah! Anyway, all right, here's, that's the driving impression of the Vento. Anything I didn't cover? Oh, I haven't covered the speed bumps. It is very, very good. And there's a speed bump in front. Let me give a little bit of distance and go past it. It is very good. It absorbs it up beautifully and with a very good concentration. Look at the city. After it went past the speed bump, there is a secondary bounce, which this car will not have. So that's what I mean. It's a better car to drive. It is not as big as that, not as practical as that, not as highly spec as that. Else? Uh, nothing much. Cheers, guys.